Sadly, if you're a commuter in the UK or just an avid cyclist, some of us will end up riding in the dark. So you need lights. But which lights do you need? There is just so many different lights to choose from for different purposes, different riding situations, and let's not forget the huge difference in price. So in this video, we're gonna go over all the different sorts of lights, all the different features that they have. So you're hopefully no longer in the dark about lights. So firstly, and obviously we recommend that you use a minimum of two lights when you're on your bike, and that's gonna be a white light on the front and a red light on the back. In a lot of countries around the world, it's actually illegal to ride without these. And even if it's not, let's be honest, it's just a safer way to ride your bike, so there's no reason not to. It's always best to use or keep more than two lights with you. So if one of your lights runs out of battery or fails, for example, then you've still got another one to use to get you home. And the more lights you have on you, the more visible you're gonna to be to other road users, so it's just gonna make you safer and safer. So the more you look like a Christmas tree, the safer you'll be. So the next thing to consider when getting lights is some lights are there to help you be seen by other road users and some lights are there to help you see the road in front of you when there's no other lights around. So for example, if you're always riding on lit roads and you can always see the road in front of you, then you only need lights to be seen to help other road users see you. These lights are generally less bright, but also with that, they're also a lot less expensive. All bike lights are rated under the same standard and we rate them in lumens. This is always made clear on a website or stamped clearly on the side of the box. For to be seen lights in the dark in an urban environment, we recommend going for a lumen rating between 50 and 200. So a really good light for this would be the Cateye Volt 200 XC, along with the Rapid Mini rear light as well. So to put that in context, your average car on full beam on the road is going to be blasting out around 1,200 lumens. These come in at a really affordable, respectable price and are going to keep you so much safer out on the road. So this is what we'd recommend as an absolute minimum when riding in lower light conditions. On the other hand, if you're riding on unlit roads, we recommend using a front light with a minimum of 750 to 800 lumens. You can get away with using a less powerful front light, although you're not going to be able to have that great vision of the road in front. And it's just gonna be more fun and give you more confidence riding the road ahead of you when you can see it clearly, as well as obviously making you more visible and safer on the roads. A really good example of the sort of light that you'll wanna be looking at for this sort of riding is this exposure set. It comes with an 850 lumen front light as well as a 75 lumen rear light. If you're gonna be riding off-road, you're gonna to wanna to go brighter still. So you're gonna to wanna to have a minimum of at least a thousand lumens to be riding off-road. This helps you ride safer and actually faster as well as you can pick a better line further down the trail. Generally, a mountain bike light will give you a bigger, wider field of view. And this is necessary because a trail in front of you is usually a lot tighter and more windy than a tarmac road. A really good example of the sort of light that you're gonna to wanna to use for this sort of riding is the Lifeline Parvo. This gives you a super wide field of light as well as being a whopping 2000 lumens. So an absolute whopper of a choice for those of you riding quickly downhill in the dark. One thing that must be said that is really important is when riding lights anywhere near this brightness, it's really important to point them down when riding on the road. To think some of these lights are almost twice as powerful as car lights, it really does dazzle drivers coming towards you. And this would actually make things more dangerous for you as the driver won't be able to see where they're going. Another option on super bright lights is the way that you can actually change the settings on them and tone them down. So if you're riding mountain bike trails, you can have them on full whack and then if you've got a short ride home, you can just tone it down to a more suitable lumen setting for the journey on the road home. One thing to look at when buying lights is the different flash modes that they have and the different beam options that they have to offer. These are really handy for different riding situations as well as giving you really different running times for the light as obviously running a brighter light is gonna burn out the battery quicker. So generally when buying a more expensive light, it will come with a larger capacity battery. This is to power the super bright light, but often you won't actually need to use that full bright light and you can actually run a lower power full beam for a lot longer. But often you won't need to use the light in full beam and you can run the light for a lot longer if you dip down the settings and just run it with a slightly less power lumen mode. And even better than that, when you put the light into flash mode, you can sometimes get 10 times the running time. Another thing that's really important, especially if you're riding out on the roads, is beam pattern visibility. You don't just want to be seen head on, you also really need to be seen from the sides as well. So some lights offer much better side visibility than others. For example, on this Lifeline rear light here, you can see that it's very bright straight on, but then you've also got these big red panels on the side here that are going to help you be seen from the side. Another great option just to increase your visibility from the side is just to wear more lights. A really good example of these is the Cat Eye Mini wearable lights. So it's just a small touch like that that can make a big difference to your visibility at night. So the cheapest of lights tend to be powered by disposable batteries. 
In almost every situation, we recommend going for lights that come with an internal rechargeable battery. These lights just simply charge up using a USB cable. Firstly, they're just so much more easy to charge up, and if you're a commuter, you can just charge them up through your work computer. You're less likely to get caught out without a light or not to have to change the batteries, as you're more likely to charge them up. It also means you don't have to buy and lug around spare batteries with you all the time, which is also a bonus towards the environment. Although these lights are usually the cheapest ones to buy initially, over time, all those extra batteries are gonna tally up. This brings us quite nicely onto battery life. It's always really important to check whether your light is gonna last long enough for the rides that you intend to do, but ideally quite a lot longer as well, as we always have rides that go on longer than necessary for one reason or another. Generally, the more powerful and the more expensive the light is, the bigger the battery unit will come with it. And it's worth looking at these different lumen modes that your light has to offer as the battery will last for different amounts of time in the different modes. All lights have to be mounted to your bike one way or another and there are a few different ways that they can do this. If you're using a lighter weight light, you'll find that most of them come with rubber straps like this one. These are really good as you can just chuck them on and off your bike when you need to use them. It also helps your bike look fresh and clean as you don't have any leftover mounts when not using the lights. Although having said that, a heavier duty mount is definitely needed when using a bigger light. This is going to help keep a big light locked in place, especially when using it in rough terrain, so you're always going to have the light when you need to use it. Another thing to think about before buying a light is to check that the mount actually fits onto your bike. A lot of road bikes come with aero handlebars and seat tubes. This can sometimes make fitting lights a bit of hassle, although there's loads of lights out there that fit them. And we usually recommend just going with something with a stretchy mount. As well as actually using bike lights, it's really good to wear as much reflective gear as you can as well, as that can really help you be seen on the roads as well. I hope this guide has been helpful and I'd love to hear some tips and tricks that you guys have on how you get seen on the road. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.